What's going on, everyone? Happy Friday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Friday edition of the Virus Update for Friday, October 18th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. This is where I do the virus update on all things COVID and all those other viruses that could be a health threat to you. There's a lot of them out there. More viruses are about to enter the picture as we are heading into the colder, colder months. COVID is in lower levels right now, but though COVID is dropping in just a few weeks here in the United States, and it's already happening in other countries around the world, COVID is going to start to rise again. At the same time, we will be dealing with flu, RSV, and a whole bunch of viruses. You need to be informed with what's going on, and you don't hear much about these viruses on the news or from the government. That's where I come into play. I give you updates on what's going on with these viruses. So you want to stay informed with what's going on? Subscribe down below. Give this a thumbs up. The more people that hit that thumbs up button, the more YouTube is going to push this content throughout the algorithm. Of course, share this video with anyone you know. Hit that notification bell to be notified when the latest video is and leave your comments down below. Alrighty, we have a few news stories today. Then we're going to look at some daily data. We're going to look at some new CDC data, maybe some wastewater. And yes, we're also going to look at some weekly state totals. Starting off today with bird flu. In Bulgaria, they report a bird flu outbreak on a poultry farm. So this is not good. This time it is H5N1 that is the problem. And we're seeing H5N1 spread in many different countries around the world. In this case, it's in animals. In some cases here in the United States, we have had human cases of H5N1. All right, moving on to the UK now. Staff failed to follow COVID safety rules at Devon Care Home, where seven residents died, according to the coroner. And yes, this has been something that is unraveling, not just in the UK, but all around the world. We're starting to find out now that um, patients were not kept safe in the early days of the pandemic. And if we actually read into this um, article further, they do talk about back during the pandemic. I hate using past tense. We are still in a pandemic. People are still being infected, becoming disabled, hospitalized, and people are still dying of COVID. But yes, this was a real problem back in the beginning. Beginning. I'm saying the word back, using past tense. But in the beginning, there was a sense of not knowing what to do. And people who were released from the hospital with COVID, older people, didn't have a place to go. So they were placed back into the long-term care facilities the old age homes, the rehabilitation centers, and unfortunately due to a lack of precaution in the early days, there, weren't, there was not enough uh, protection such as high quality masking because of the lack of that, it led to more cases and people died. Like for example, look at this uh, first name, William Wilkinson was 102 years old. If that person did not get COVID, how old would they have lived to be? Hard to say, but it is what has happened back in the early days. And of course, now there's even less precautions being taken at all, which is just totally absurd. All right, moving on to this. In Galveston, Texas, we've been talking about whooping cough all week long, a lot of times this week. In Galveston, Texas, they report a recent spike in whooping cough cases. And for whatever reason, in this article, they do not state how many cases there have been, but it looks like this is between the ages of 12 and 34 years old that they are seeing cases of whooping cough. Taking a look at the allergy level for today, 31% of the country is in the low to medium status. You can see there's a lot of green on the map, which is a good thing. Taking a look at air quality levels, and I'm happy to report for the majority of the country, things are better, but there are a few troubling spots. Chicago is one of them, and I don't know what's going on in Chicago. Is there a fire up in the Milwaukee area? I should say north of Chicago, because it looks like Chicago was a little yellow earlier. Now it looks like it's centered over Milwaukee. Also, Detroit is seeing some yellow today, and the West Coast still has a few hot spots, but not as bad as it was. All right, moving on now to this. 
I got to tell you that um, I still have my climate data report on X, but I also started a second one now over on Blue Sky because oh, so many people are starting to make Blue Sky accounts. And on that account, it is the full name, Climate Data Report. There's no abbreviation at the end because apparently they allow you to type in more characters when you have a handle over on Blue Sky. And I also have COVID. Uh, my COVID stuff is also on Blue Sky. I'll show you that at the end of today's video. And of course, you can follow me over on my other YouTube channel, Climate Data Report. I definitely will be getting something out there over the weekend. And I did post a video yesterday about drought, how it's worsening here in the United States. All right, taking a look at EMS calls in Philadelphia yesterday. 832 EMS calls were reported that is over 800 and i am not happy about that a live looking at montgomery county pennsylvania which is just west of philadelphia and we see there are currently nine ems calls very busy right now in chester county pennsylvania look at all these calls not one not two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifty sixteen active calls right now and it looks like uh, three of them are for sick person. I'm seeing respiratory difficulty a couple times. I'm seeing stroke a different couple different times. I'm also seeing hypotension, heart problems, just a slew of EMS calls in Chester County, Pennsylvania right now, which is not a good thing. And speaking of Pennsylvania, I'll show you this again. Uh, Pennsylvania this week reports in wastewater that things are either not changing or they are dropping at this time, and there is insufficient data. In other words, meaning it did not update at a few places um, in yesterday's update. So those uh, sites are coming up gray, as you can see there, and they are in southeast Pennsylvania. The UK yesterday did do an update, and I will show you that. The UK reported a 17.8% increase in cases. So 3,496, that's up by 529. And then when we take a look at the weekly deaths they had 163 that was up by 35 that was a 27.3 percent increase uh, using healthcare. 2622 people were admitted to the hospital that is up by six percent and that's up by 149 you may see some articles that say "Ooh, hospitalizations are skyrocketing in the uk while they are going up i wouldn't call six percent a massive increase in hospitalizations if that came in say 20 or 30 percent yeah then we would have a big increase but there's some of these articles that i don't know they just want to scare you and don't get me wrong everything is still in just a horrible state right now but uh, some articles make it seem worse than what it is i think they're trying to get clicks i don't know maybe maybe i'm wrong maybe it really is a big increase but i don't call six percent a massive increase i would say over 20 or 30 percent you know like like we're seeing here with deaths that's yeah that's a big increase for deaths so uh, that is problematic and you can see here on the charts the increase and the chart would make it look like a bigger increase and should that continue well we may come up to some of the highs of the year when it comes to deaths all right moving on now take a look at walgreens this week the national positivity rate for covid in the United States is 17%. The prior week was 18.4%. That was down by 1.4%. And testing was also down this week as well. Taking a look at some new wastewater data from the CDC that just came in. And there's something I want to draw your attention to. The number of red sites has significantly decreased. It's now 80 to 100% uh, COVID detected in these sites. Just only 20. That's the lowest number we have seen for that since spring. Still a lot of orange sites, 149 of them at 60 to 79 percent, and then the lowest level of COVID. That's now up to 305 sites. You can see New York State's doing really well. The Southeast is doing really well. Illinois, the Great Lakes, the West Coast. Look at California. California is doing really well. There's still one red site there, and the Pacific Northwest. It is finally starting to improve there, and your wave was so bad in the pack Northwest that. It may actually provide you just a little bit of immunity when we go into the next wave, but even there, I think there will be another wave. All right, taking a look at some new CDC data that just came in, epidemic trends. And we can see here, there's a lot of states now that have switched from uh, likely declining or declining to not changing. So that's telling me we're not too far off from where we start to rebound. And 
maybe go back up again in some areas. And I think this go round, it may occur in the north first, but we'll just have to see. But you can see on the west coast, almost all of the coastal states are in declining at this time and likely declines still in Arizona, likely decline in South Dakota, North Dakota, Iowa, Louisiana, Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, North Carolina, Virginia, also up in New Hampshire as well. Then we do have a lot of declining states and of course it's not estimated in Missouri or Wisconsin for whatever reason at this time. Now this did not update today but I will give you an update on it anyhow. KP 3.1.1 is the leading COVID variant at 57.2%. XEC comes in at 10.7%. And then KP 2.3 is at 7.8% at this time. Taking a look at emergency department visits. While they are still dropping, that drop has slowed off ever so slightly at this time. Taking a look at what's going on with influenza-like activity, and we can see here, everywhere, for the most part, is in a minimal category. We do have District of Columbia, which has now gone back into the low category. That is the one area where we could see things starting to rise once again. There was one point they went to moderate, then that dropped once again. Now would be a great time, if you haven't gotten your flu shot yet, to go out and get one. That goes for anywhere in the United States. All right, taking a look at New Jersey for today. 65 out of 70 hospitals reported, 247 hospitalizations. On a ventilator, 11 at this time, discharged. There have been 24 reported in the last 24 hours, and in the ICU, 34 patients at this time. In New York State, 709 people tested positive in the last 24 hours, not including those at-home tests, and you can see here, this, uh, these levels are continuing to drop at this time. Taking a look at the hospitalizations in New York State, that continues to drop as well. All right, let's take a look at some data now from CJS83172. And in Florida, these are weekly. The first three states are da daily weekday reporting states. Florida reported 313 new cases and 23 new deaths. New Jersey, 1,047 new cases and three new deaths in a two-day report. New York, 787 new cases. That was on yesterday's update. Weekly reporting states. Alaska, 125 new cases reported and two new reported deaths. Connecticut added 783 new cases and eight CDC reported deaths. Delaware added 141 new cases and four new deaths. Georgia, 1,069 new cases and 22 new deaths. And get this, this is including one from the 11 to 17 age group and one from the 18 to 22 age group, the first such COVID deaths this year, which again uh, brings up a good reminder. All ages can get severe COVID. I don't care if you're young and healthy, you can get severe COVID. And as you can see here, people in the younger ages can die from COVID. Now, we don't know if they had underlying conditions, but again, they were young. In the beginning of the pandemic, we were told young people can't get COVID bad. Well, there you go. Two people in younger ages died of COVID. Now, this year in Georgia, Iowa, an estimated 219 new positive tests and 12 CDC reported deaths. Kentucky, 767 new cases and 25 CDC reported deaths. Massachusetts, 1,162 new cases and 12 new reported deaths. Minnesota, 1,446 new cases and 19 new deaths. North Carolina, 417 new state reported hospitalizations and 30 CDC reported deaths. Nebraska, 305 new positive tests and 9 CDC reported deaths. Ohio, which I mentioned yesterday, had 2,874 new cases and 33 new deaths. Utah, 599 more people added to their quote living with COVID tab and 6 new deaths. Vermont finally came back to what should be closer to normal numbers for Vermont, 153 new cases and one new death, which that's the lowest deaths they have reported in quite some time. Alrighty, going back here, let's go over to California, which did make a change to their dashboard. If it comes up here, it looks like it is uh, freezing up at the moment. Here we go. And California did change how they uh, 
do their dashboard and they show here metrics test positivity change for COVID-19 is down by 0.2 percent bringing the total positivity rate for COVID to 4.1 percent flu is at 1.5 percent RSV is at 1 percent total of admissions change for COVID and flu not available it is up slightly for RSV that's just 0.2 percent percent of total deaths change is down by 0.4 percent that is 1.2 percent total seasonal pediatric deaths look at this it says here uh california has had two pediatric deaths of COVID this year again it, it it's worth me repeating that yes there can be deaths of COVID in kids and in flu it says there's one flu death and wastewater concentration trends and it says here it is low plateauing key messages covid 19 activity is decreasing influenza and rsv activity are currently low in california the most prevalent covid 19 variant lineage continues to be descendants of the jn.1 variant at this time Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Friday edition of the virus update. We will have another virus update either tomorrow or Sunday. Just pay attention to my X account and pay attention to this, my Blue Sky account. It is Data Report. Type that in on the search on Blue Sky and you will find me there. I am over at uh, Blue Sky. A lot of people have been making Blue Sky accounts. I've had this one for quite some uh, time now i also did make that other blue sky account matter of fact let me show that to you here here's the other one for my uh, weather there it is right here and you can see here climate data reports over here on blue sky is my other one for weather so go follow both of those counts if you're moving over to blue sky i will not be leaving x i'm staying on x but i'm also going to be posting the same things i post on x over on blue sky and i'm going to start paying more attention to my notifications here i was pretty bad at doing that before but with so many people migrating over i'm going to be paying closer attention to the notifications there Alrighty, folks that does it for the friday virus update i will see you all again sometime over the weekend if you enjoyed this update give it a thumbs up if you're new subscribe down below hit that notification bell share this video with anyone you know and leave your comments down below. I will see you again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Friday evening. Thanks for watching.